No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. Today we're here with XXX Tentacion. See, I'm making you say your own name because it's, I've been looking at it <laughs> online for the past few months and I didn't really know how to say it. But uh, hey, man, it's nice to have you in the studio. I appreciate it, brother. Thank you. And I guess you should, uh, well, we got No Jumper alumni Craig Zen over here on the left. Uh, maybe you should introduce your homie. All right, we got Craig Zen, we got Lil Weefy, Lil Buddha Wi-Fi, you feel me? We got Lil Buddha. Gabe, Young Dirty Dick on the beat, you feel me? You got yeah. Skeet Mask, the slunk guy. We got Skeet Bruno Mass, Dick on Bruno Dicker down in the corner, you feel me? And then we got Adam from No Jumper. Adam from posted. No Jumper. What's poppin'? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we out here. Um, yeah, so I guess we should start with uh, the basic information. Uh, where are you from? I am from, all right, so I got to get in depth. So, all right, how I put it? I was raised borderline like Pompano, but I was born in Plantation um, Plantation Hospital, raised around Pompano area, raised around North Lauderdale and Broward. Like so, Broward County was like where I grew up. So then after a while, like I got kicked out of like a lot of schools, so I ended up going to like Deep Side or or Lauder Hill. Okay. And then I lived throughout like Lauder Hill for like a lot of my life after okay. I got arrested. So what kind of environment are these in? And for people who don't know, he's talking about Florida. Lauder Hill is like the hood. Lauder Hill is like. Like, niggas call it four-way. Like, you throw a four-way like this. Like, well, what's this mean? It's the four-way. Like, it's like four-way. Yeah, four-way. The block. Deep side. From the, yeah, deep side. From the <laughs> okay. Block. Like, type shit. Like, Clearly, I'm out of the loop yeah, on this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just brower shit. Like, yeah. like bro. Yeah. How old are you? I'm, I don't say my age. You don't like to say it? Yeah, I don't say much about myself because, like, I feel like everybody tries to judge me as far as knowledge-wise. I feel like the younger you are or however you say you are, like, Niggas feel like they have something over you, you feel me? Like, I don't let anybody little bro me at that. Okay. So I just don't like to speak about my age because people try and determine, use my age to determine my knowledge. Okay. Little so. bro you. I hear a lot of people say that that terminology these days. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's trying to little bro me. Yeah. Have you ever had this happen to you? Um, no, nah, because, like, I just fade niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, nah. you're a fighter? You've been getting a lot of fights? Um, bro, I've been fighting this since I was a kid. Fuck. <laughs> come close, come close Dude, to me, bro. He knows. <laughs> what he's always been throwing the hands or what? I mean, I've been there plenty of situations and like plenty of fights. Like I knew him for four years. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, so okay, you grew up in the hood. Type shit, yeah. Type shit. All right. And so, what 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 kind of upbringing did you have? Like, what's your mom like? Um, my mom is mean. Poor yeah. mean. <laughs> my mom, my mom probably like. My mom's probably the only girl that could beat me up. Really? Yeah, probably. What about Ronda Rousey? Ronda Rousey? No, I'll throw hands with Ronda Rousey. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's good to know. Ronda Rousey. <laughs> you, can, you can see me with the hands. <laughs> well, no. she's, she's coming off of L anyway, so she got an advantage. <laughs> Yo, that fight was epic, bro. That, fight was, that was amazing. That fucking fight was Fantastic crazy. experience, yeah. All right, um, my mom. <laughs> Quick discussion of women's MMA. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I love MMA. I've actually met Tyrone yeah. Spong, Rashad Evans. Nice. Um, Vitor Belfort. Yeah, yeah. yeah cool I guys. love MMA, too. Oh, it's yeah. so, so entertaining. All fucking cool guys. Yeah. Um, all right. So my, your mom, though. Yeah, my mom. My um, How do I put it? My mom is like the spit image of me, but a, like probably more, you know, pretty. Okay. She uh. She doesn't have gold teeth though, right? Nah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. No. Nah, she look. She look. He's the reason why I got gold teeth though. Like my mom, when I was a kid, I, like wanted me to get gold teeth. She so, wanted you to yeah. when you were a kid. Yeah. When I was a kid, she asked me, bro, like asked me if I wanted gold teeth type shit. What the fuck was wrong? Was it when uh, Paul Wall was on the radio yeah. saying girls? Was it really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Ludacris. No, nah, cause it's just where I was like pumping though, bro. Like like niggas like Kodak, like like bro. It was big on girls. Girls was a yeah. thing. Like girls. To be like, honest, in the south. Thing, you know? Girls is everything, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. 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 Every, what you need, it's like becoming a man. It's like getting, it's like losing your virginity once you're like 16 it's or so. It's like to... become, it's like from from boy to thug. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when you hop off the porch, you start running that around I... with a bunch of gold teeth. Yeah. yeah. That <laughs> That's no, tough. she just. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bring the mic. Bring the mic. You're not gonna be able to hear. And when you see like another nigga like just have gold in their mouth, and you just look at them like, damn, bro, he doing something right with his life. You do look at them oh, for different, real. for sure. I'm looking, I think Kodak wears it extremely well, because you notice he always, he got his own emoji, just. Yeah, his, yeah. Shits, his shits are perms, though. Yeah. yeah he's, oh, okay. He's savage with it. Shout out Kodak. That's, that's like the ultimate Shout level is when you get the permanent yeah, ones, the right? Yeah, the permanent ones where you just permanent, though. You guys Kodak fans? <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a Kodak supporter. Yeah. I, I want, I'm not a very, like, I can't, I can't use the word fan. Fan for many people. It's, it's more of like a, I, I'm inspired by a lot of people. Like, right. I won't go and say like I don't listen to Kodak. I won't go say like I listen to all these artists. But we fuck with them. Yeah, yeah we, fuck we fuck with, with them heavy. Sound. Just to call yourself a fan is like it's a support. Like I like when I tell support, my fans, yeah. if you're gonna be a fan, 
it's different than being someone that supports me. Okay. Because if you're a fan, that means you, you abide by everything that I believe in and then that you support what I do to the fullest extent. Okay. If you support me, you're just like, oh, I see that nigga, he's grinding, you feel me? He's doing his thing. Right. And I'm going to support from this distance. But a fan is someone that, like, I feel like you have to be a core fan. Like, I have a cult fan base. I don't have, like, a weak-ass fan base. Like, right. I speak to my fans. I help my fans. Like, because I try and be in depth, you know? Your shit is weird because you have a crazy-ass following on social media and stuff and, like... It's not like necessarily the craziest like numbers like ten thousand or whatever. Or how many are you on SoundCloud? Um, SoundCloud, I'm not 18, 18. 18. 18.5. But like the numbers are retarded because it's like you really seem like <laughs> and and just the number of people who have asked me to interview you is fucking insane. Like yeah. considering you know that you're a, a, like an yeah, underground a artist. More, like yeah, the number of tweets I had to read about you man, are like I don't want kids out there to think that they should tweet at me about their friend eight hundred times, but. Yeah. You know, it does. Eventually, I notice at some point. Yeah, hell yeah. No, um, definitely a fucking cult fan base. Like, I definitely yeah. have a fucking cult fan base. I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna... Not into the headphones. Yeah. No, as long, as long as you... yeah. Oh, okay. Damn. Uh, now look, we can see the man now. Okay. Uh, Damn. Everything off. To come out the shirt. I was trying to hide myself, type shit. Bro. Fat trail over here. Time, bro. Well, it's hot too. We can't go <laughs> nowhere. Yeah, it's, 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 the temperature is 76 nowhere. degrees in here. Yeah, it's, that's it's, solid. All right, so you feel me? <laughs> we booted up. I came out the shirt, type shit. Drill music on deck right now. <sighs> Let's play some fucking walk. <laughs> this looks like drill music. <laughs> All right. All right. So, okay, we were just talking about your mom a little bit. She's mean. Tell me a little bit else. Um. All right. I mean, when I when I grew up with my mom, like, I mean, should I get in depth? Uh, Cause my mom's the type of like girl. Like, if I say too much, she'll get hot at me. Cause it's right. still it's still real life for me. Besides, yeah, yeah. You know I mean? Um, I don't know. It's I mean, I'm gonna keep it one thousand. I'm gonna keep it one thousand. Like, if niggas wanna judge me, they wanna judge me. Like, I'll just I'll keep it to a minimum. Me and my mom went through it hard. Like, my mom was just in situations where she couldn't take care of me. You feel me? Like, niggas done drive-bys on me when I was like a jit type shit. Like. Like, I, I stabbed my first nigga a bit. Like, I bit out, like, basically a nigga tried to put his hands on my mom type shit. And like, you were how young? I was, like, six. Six. Like, and you six. stabbed him. And I, with I bit, what? I bit his flesh out and, like, could, like grabbed the glass shard and, like, poked him with it type shit. Like, stabbed him with it. Like, wow. When I was, like, six, seven. Like, uh -huh. my mom just had me, like, she was in a situation where, like, she wanted me around, but she couldn't afford to, like, because of shit she was around. You know, it, she was still growing up. Like, my mom was raised in Jamaica. I'm but what was sure she around? Was she around a lot of, like, drug dealing and crime? Just, or, like, yeah. why is she around motherfuckers that were beating her up and you got to stab them? She just, uh, to put it in a simpler term, like, my mom wasn't a prostitute or nothing, but, like, she just she just wasn't in a very stable environment because she had no help at that. Like, right. my mom just had it hard, bro. Like, uh -huh. honestly, she, so she, raising a kid, honestly, was on her last our last priorities, you feel me? So what she did was she passed me from hand to hand to people that could take care of me, you know? Uh -huh. And, like, doing that, like, I was putting in situations that weren't the best, but I get what she was doing, so I don't resent her. I would never resent my mom, but, like, my mom had it hard, I had it hard, and it's just a very misunderstood. Like, my, my relationship is still... Uh, being but you're really man. young to already have that acceptance of like yeah. looking at your mom and being like I understand what you went through and I know that it was hard and I can forgive you for whatever I had to go through but did you feel that way as a kid did you did you understand were you angry at her when you were like a little kid getting put in all these I crazy chased, situations I chased her like Girl, like I remember I used to beat niggas at school type shit just to like hear my mom yell at me or talk to me. What, just because you wanted some attention yes, from her? Yes, I wanted some attention, yeah. Like, I remember I used to go to like fucking um, Margate Middle. I remember like, I remember one day like this bitch kept fucking with me. Like, and I don't, I don't, like, I don't, I don't say hit girls. I don't know, this is not something that, but I'm going to like keep it 1,000 for me. I don't like to lie. Um, there was like this bitch that kept slapping me at school type shit. So I remember like one day. I was like, all right, obviously it's a girl. She probably likes me or some shit, you know? So I went to my mom and I asked her. I was like, I was like, would you get mad if I slapped this bitch? And she was like, well, I didn't say it like that. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like would you get mad if like I put my hands on a girl? She's like, you give always give a girl three warnings type shit. So like, I That's remember, what your mom told you? Yeah, you always give a girl three warnings. And if she, like, she, if she keeps hitting you, like obviously she's trying to harm you. Right. So if she's trying to harm you, then like, then you go to like, to the extent to where you gotta handle it. Uh -huh. So I remember one day, like this, like, this girl and her boyfriend, like, were fucking with me at school. And I was like, cause I was making fun of them. And like, I think she slapped me or some shit. And like, I slapped the fuck out of her and like, and like, need her. And, <laughs> and I remember from after that, like, my mom realized how serious I took her. Like, her word was my bond. Right. You know? So, like, afterwards, like, 
anything she would say to me, I'd take it to heart. Like, if she would duck me, I'd take it to heart. Like, I remember one time she got mad, like, about some dumb shit and just said a lot of, like, hurtful shit. So, like, everything, like, I mean, to skip to the point, when I was a kid, like, I took everything she said to heart. I took right. my mom very seriously. We always forget that, though, that kids take everything that we say completely literally. Because yeah. as adults, we are so used to sarcasm and, like, nuance and conversation, you know? Literally. But you just, yeah, that's, that's crazy. But so, uh... All right, so so what kind of kid were you in school? You're acting like you were getting picked on and shit. Were you a little hard ass or were you a little nerd because you're kind of small? I was a hard ass. Yeah. Like, how do I put it? You were overcompensating. I was overcompensating. <laughs> I was um. All right, how do I put it? I was that kid that didn't say much, that but like him not saying much made you want to know what the fuck he was thinking. Uh huh. So I'd be like, I'd be in the cut, and then when I'd say some shit. It'd be some weird shit. Like, I'd say some crazy shit like, oh, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you or some shit. Like, I'll be the kid in the cut to, like, just get off on somebody type shit. And then you wonder why the fuck it happened. So uh-huh. you come to me and you speak to me and want to get the inside of everything. Like, I never really, I never really <coughs> spoke. I always acted. I mean, that was always my problem. I always acted before I, I thought anything through. Were you, like, getting in trouble all the time or were you kind yeah. of laying low? I, I mean, part of, like, I, I spent a year in jail, bro. Like, at, I gotta, at what point in your I life? Got, when I was like, how old, how old it, bro? I met him in fucking jail. Yeah, that's yeah. How you, really? Yeah. We met in jail. What the fuck were you in jail for? Man, I was in jail for a whole bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> a whole bunch of shit with my life, like selling weed, getting uh, caught, like getting kicked out of school, a whole yeah. bunch of crazy shit. And what did you go in for that time? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Um, a lot of shit. All right. <laughs> Armed robbery. Armed robbery. What um, was that like? No, no, it was, it was gonna keep going. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Armed robbery. Yeah, fuck it. Uh, and this is not me being cool. This is not yeah, me saying this shit is okay. Well, yeah, all, we don't condone all, this shit. I was, just, <laughs> I was just fucking up, you know. Allegedly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you already went to jail for it, then yeah, it doesn't yeah, have to exactly. be allegedly. Yeah. Um, armed robbery, armed burglary, possession armed burglary, of a firearm, possession of a firearm, um, armed burglary with dwelling, resisting without violence. Grand Theft of three yeah, charges. Yeah, he got a lot of charges. Possession of oxycodone. They was trying to direct oh file his ass. Yeah. They was de- it was. I seen all these charges. Like I seen it. Like we went to court. <laughs> I had the, the worst judge, charges in the jail. The judge read the um, charges to him, and I'm looking at this nigga like, what the fuck <laughs> is little nigga? <laughs> yeah. is, I don't even know where to start on that Bro. list though. Like, and where it was to start. Like, like why are you stealing cars? Number one, why are you selling all no, those pills? No, it wasn't even yeah. cars. It was the amount of uh, the <laughs> amount of houses I robbed. Like, bro. This it was, was before face tats. It, I, I was a little nigga, like I was tiny, like I had a, a fucking Wiz Khalifa patch in my head, like bro. Yeah, I, went, yeah. I looked like a little, like a little, like a little bitch. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> but you were like, getting it in. Yeah, but uh, bro, I was, I was dead ass. Like was ask lit. any nigga around me, you're like was I, I was, lit. I was a young savage. I was a little savage, oh, like. Okay, but were you trapping? Like were you actually oh, no, like no, no, making no. money, or were I you never, like just fucking doing a bunch of crazy ass nah, shit, getting in trouble? What it was is like, all right, I told my mom like one day, cause like, like I said, I was always after my mom, like I always wanted her attention. So I told my mom one day, I was like, if you want, if you want me to do anything, you need to be around. Because mm-hmm. at this time, I lived with my grandma. Because right. she kicked me out. Because basically, like, bro, there's a lot to the story with my mom. Like, my mom is a big part of my life. Mm-hmm. But um, I was fucking up. Basically, I got kicked out of middle school. And she put me in a, a behavioral correctional called Sheridan House. Mm-hmm. And shouts out to Sheridan House. Wonderful. Um, it's called Sheridan House Family Ministries. It's actually located in Broward near Davie. But wonderful people, want, like wonderful environment. Like I, I enjoy what they were teaching me, you know. But um, how you get kicked out of middle school? Oh. <laughs> yeah, kicked out of middle school. Why? That's Look, a good question. You're right. right. You're filling in the blanks. Um, yeah. what did I get? All right, there's a list of shit. You did. I remember I beat, I beat some niggas like I, like I beat some niggas I and like. Shouts out to him. I fuck with him now. We're cool now. I think his name is like Marcus. Or but he only has one eye now. No, no, no. His eye, his eye was good, but like I oh, fucked okay. his eye up, type shit. You and I remember there was up again. yeah, there was this fat kid Get in my down. class that made fun of my mom. I kicked him in his mouth. Oh, fat kid. Um, I do. I was. I fought some. I do. I, 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 <laughs> I fought some chico nigga on on the bus, um, because he said some shit like like to my, like when I was when I was in middle school, bro, I was a little pimp. I'm not gonna, gonna flag. Like I probably got more bitches than I get now. Like really, I'm a loner now. So bro. you're getting pussy from a super young age, or did Fuck. it take a while for you to oh start getting bitches? Oh my god, bumps? bro. Because I was a pretty young nigga. Like they my love mom, a savage, don't my they? mom, my mom raised me like a little pretty bitch. Like I was pretty. Like I used to wear Aeropostale. Like no, not Aeropostale. Yeah. No, no, no. Let me get right. Let me get right. I, I used to wear Abercrombie. Like Abercrombie okay. and Hollister. You feel me? I was yeah, not. That was like the third wrong <laughs> yeah. version of yeah. Abercrombie. Yeah. Yeah. Like. 
Like it, it, it's levels to that shit. Yeah, yeah <laughs> so, it is really. That, uh, You're also the first person I've ever interviewed who you, who holds the mic like he's performing with both uh, hands. I don't on know. It. I, no, cause my cool, hands yeah. are fidgety, bro. They're like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, my hands are fucked. Like I so fucked like, them. I, I broke both of them. Like both of my hands are broken as we speak. Right. Damn. So like, true fact. Yeah. True fact. True fact. I, both I, your I, hands I, are broken from yeah. fighting. I'm assuming. Yeah. True fact. Yeah. Yeah, bro. What? Trust me. So you're still getting it in. Jeez. All right. Let's keep going with where we're at in the story with you. No games. Getting kicked out of middle school or whatever. Somebody in Texas. Uh, Yo, illegal. I did stop a nigga in Texas. Shout out Wi Fi's funeral <laughs> over here with no mics. Flexing on the bike, you're gonna be able to see that in the hey, shot look, a little bit. Man, cool. I'm gonna tell you like this, this is how it happened. All right, so look, we in the convenience store, right? And there's one little white. Come closer to the mic, nigga. Go closer to the mic. He looked like, look like a little hipster or whatever, whatever. A nigga comes up and he's just like, fuck everybody in this convenience store. And X is in there. So X is like, what? So X literally goes outside and just stares at him. He turns behind and just. Wops him right in his shit. White boy turns around, he's just like, What the fuck, dude? Like, Why'd you do that, man? <laughs> yeah, he, he was hot. He just needed one dude. So so basically, if somebody's looking for a fight, you, hey, you like gonna, to be yeah, the guy to yeah. serve him up. Because right. it's like, it's like, why be a fucking prick? Like, I'm anything but a fucking prick. Like, I do everything with my own motive, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't I believe anybody that can live without motive is literally the most insane person there is. I believe the person who probably plots on murder or plots on doing crazy things is the least crazy, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't I, I'm considered crazy, but I think I'm the least crazy because I want the man who can just kill a man with no recollection or no thought to it or, or just make a crazy decision with no plot behind it is literally fucking crazy. But so you don't think you're crazy be, be, like because you because I, I, I everything comes with thought. Okay, yeah, yeah. I yeah. probably think more than the average human. Like, so you don't think you could get just driven to doing something really fucked up in the heat of the moment? I, and I can, but there's always that one thought as of now. Before, right. before I was fucking crazy. Like, ask him, like, when I, I can probably, I, you think I could tell the story about that faggot I beat up? Yeah. In, oh, in, hell yeah. In jail? Yeah, that shit was hilarious. Let's hear this. All right, so basically, they put me in a room, like, all right. So they put him in a room with this First faggot, they put right? me in the room with this nigga. So you, you yeah, mean, tell, him to, tell him how they put you in You mean an actual room. gay guy when you say faggot? Yeah, yeah. He, okay. yeah. Literally. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. No disrespect yeah. to anybody yeah. that's homosexual. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah. But once no. you try to push it on to me, like, it's yeah, yeah. Like, oh, a yeah. different story. Here's how it's problematic. Yeah. Fag is problematic, but trying to rape a heterosexual man also problematic. Exactly. So here's how we put it. I, I, you feel, you feel me? I, I allow, I, I like what people like. You feel me? If, if, if you like guys, then that's by far, that's you. You get me? Mm -hmm. I, I don't disapprove of it. I approve of it. Like, I believe gay marriage should be legal because any man or any woman should be allowed to make the decision they want. I'm with you, yeah. Exactly. exactly. I'm, I am not homosexual. I am not homophobic. So if a if a homo if a homo uh, homosexual man is around me, I will not act like a fucking prick. You know, I'm not gonna act like a piece of shit and be like, oh, he's a faggot. I don't want him. But if he tries to rape you, but in if jail. he tries to rape me, I'm gonna <laughs> okay. bash his skull. In. That, that that to me is where you cross the line. Exactly. Yeah. The so, rape thing. Yeah. You know? Okay. For me, I, I've got gay friends. I, I know gay people. Case gay no, people are cool. Gay you're people, in the music industry now. You're gonna meet a lot more. They, <laughs> yeah. There's a, they, I, I they run, they're they're everywhere. I've yeah. heard. I don't know personally, but yeah. I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking um. So the so, gay guy in jail. All right. So basically, they put him in the room. They put him in the room with Ski, and um. I got the fuck out of there first quarter. Nigga was sitting <laughs> in the corner staring at me, right? So I'm oh, like, shit. bro, if you keep staring at me, I'm gonna beat your ass, bro, and I'm gonna get another charge for you. And I really not trying to catch another charge because we in here for some dumb shit. We gonna sit like six months, go to a different program for some dumb shit. I'm not trying to. <laughs> an older guy. Uh, he yeah, he was a little bit older. Than oh me. no, bro! This nigga said he was from France and he was lying. He was he not like some he was, a he was like a compulsive liar, Italian touch. nigga. Oh, but man. yeah, bro. Anyway, so he's sitting in the corner staring at me. So I'm just banging on the door. I'm like, yeah, y'all gotta get me the fuck up out of here. Bro. I kept banging <laughs> on that. Sh I kept banging on that shit till they let me out. So they put him in, they, 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 in that's my room. room. All right, I'm gonna tell you that part. So all right, we're sitting in what's called a horseshoe because it was a tent. It's like it's a young nigga pr like jail type shit. Right. So like. Like y we're in a horseshoe. <laughs> What'd you say? Y and J. Y and J. <laughs> uh, shouts out to fucking what is it? Dog Pound. I love that movie. Bro. Right, Dog, Pound, yeah. Dog Pound. is fucking awesome. Yeah, Dog Pound is. Lit. Shout That's out Soul Plane. Soul Plane. I fucking hate Soul Plane. I just what? saw Soul Plane for the first time about. the other day. Yo, it's so I'm fucking cliche. Soul no, that shit's cliche as fuck. That shit nah. racist. The airlines called what? NWA. Oh, no, <laughs> That's so funny to me. Y'all assholes. <laughs> fuck that movie. <laughs> Soul Plane. Yeah, yeah. We're all too hyper. I just drank a bunch of coffee. Yo, I'm I'm off like this Capri Sun. You feel me? Like I was. I'm in here sipping. Yeah. Aloe water. I'm lit. I got my little iPad on the no, side. This is great. This, this, this is an awesome interview already. I appreciate it, bro. Yeah, we're, Thank already, you. We're, we're already killing it. <laughs> I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. No, fucking um. The gay no, guy in jail. The gay guy in jail. <laughs>
<laughs> that, sound, that sounds fucking bro, crazy. All I know is when he came out that room, the gay nigga was bleeding from out the top of his head, bro. And he was just sitting there smiling at me like, I'm looking at this nigga like, damn, bro, already? Bro. What, right. what did this guy do to you and what did you do to him? All right. <laughs> there's the fake story and then there's a real story. So I'll tell you how it began. Like it was they kicked him out his room. He like cause it. me and him was in the same room type shit, right? And then they made us move because we switched rooms every two. It was it every two weeks or was yeah, it two it days? Every two weeks. Every two weeks we switched rooms. Every it two made weeks you switch. Yeah. 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 Every two weeks we switched rooms because I was in a room with him and Will and like my face was like face is like like recognition type shit with uh within the like the jail. Like my face was good because like I was like I said I was quiet. I, I'm not a pussy or anything. You but mean face isn't like your level of respect. My level that of you respect, have. Okay, literally, because yeah. like I was such a good like I'm 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 you a tell good kid. Shut up over there. Hey, hey, keep shut the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> keep going. All right, so basically, like my level of respect for everybody within the jail was like it, I, I wasn't a fucking prick. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like I wanted everybody to be kosher. I wanted everybody to be calm and like just move as a, as as a family type shit. You feel me? Right. So. I respected the officers. A lot of niggas came in there trying to disrespect the officers. I was never that guy. So they came to me after they kicked him out of his room and asked them, asked me if they could put him in my room. And I looked at them and I laughed. And I was like, y'all could put him in my room, but if he does anything I, dis- like, I disapprove of, I'm going to kill him and I'm not going to give you any warning. Like, and I said it just like that. And mm-hmm. I, put it on, I put it on my life. I said it like that. And they was like, all right, that's fine. As long as he don't touch you, you shouldn't have to put your hands on him. And I was like, all right, that's fine. So... They put him in my room. First few days, he was straight. Like, he was cool. He read his books. I, I stayed in my corner. He did his thing. You feel me? He asked me a few questions. That was fine. Like I said, I'm not homophobic. He did his shit. You feel me? This is and like Brokeback Mountain. I can't wait to find out what happens. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's just got a bad ending to it. It's, so he was cool. He was cool the first few days. So I, I would speak to him. Like, I, I would even help him when people would bully him type shit. Because, like, if, if, you, if you're a bitch in jail, they, they beat your ass. Right. Yeah. So, Offer it. Yeah. <laughs> so fucking... All right, so I remember um, one day he just he just he just got sus mm-hmm. like he he was staring at me type shit. He was staring at me throughout the day and like, bro, jail makes you crazy. Yeah, like I was fucking crazy. Like ask him, there was days where I'd slam my head on the fucking door for no reason. Like I just wake up and just because like, you want to yeah. feel something. Like, what yeah, the fuck else feel are you gonna do? Like, yeah, and there's crazy numb. people in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we yeah. had this one kid that would just sit there and listen to the walls and think he's listening to music. And that us. You're around so many crazy people. So many crazy people starts to rub off on you, bro. And like I'm talking about, I had a full. Yo, this is before this is before the fucking buzz cut on the side with the with yeah, the this dreads is on the top. Any this is before any before any face any, tats. Any. Bro, I had a fucking afro, bro. We were like, even I look like I am suit. So he like, probably, I I am he probably wasn't looking at you like you were hard. Is that what you're not saying? Not type like, shit. Yeah, he, he, he looked at me like like oh the, this nigga's cool. You feel me? He's probably right. not. He's probably not the hardest. So he he's staring at me type shit. So I'm like yo, I warned you, and I laugh <laughs> and I laugh because I, I, that's all I say. Right. I laughed and I said I warned you. So I walked out the room to go take my shower, and I came back in, and I, like I was, I was trying to calm down, kind of be kosher. So I turn around and I see this nigga staring at me while I'm like I'm putting on my jumpsuit. You gotta so be I, in front of, in a towel. You gotta be in a towel yeah. in front of the nigga. You have to get naked right. in front of your friends right. type shit. So that's why it's better to be in a room with your like with your like niggas you fuck with. You feel me? Because right. if you get a weirdo, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. So I go in the corner by the toilet type shit and put and tie on my jumpsuit, and I don't put it on all the way. I tie it around my my waist, and I start beating his face in like I like. Do you want me to be graphic yes. with it? I grabbed this face and like yes. I put it on the corner type shit because we have these we have these like metal slabs type well it's not metal it's like concrete right concrete yeah. it's like concrete slabs like for yeah, beds put, yeah. and then there's like a like a styrofoam shit on top of it so I pulled off the styrofoam type shit and I threw his head on the corner and I just started stumping and like his drawing type shit and then as soon as I did that like I remember like I just put his head on the corner and I started stumping on him and then when I did that like I, sh- I tried to strangle him like I was, I was and long story short I was gonna kill him type shit. Because of what he did, like yeah, you I just felt that. He, <laughs> bro, he was just no, nah, he was just staring, bro. He, I was naked, bro. Like he was staring at me. You feel me? So I started strangling, like I'm strangling him, like, and he's like leaking, leaking, leaking type shit. And I'm strangling him so he doesn't scream. So I'm strangling him, and like I'm about to kill this nigga. You feel me? Right. And then luckily, to my luck, luckily because I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be speaking to you. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be as far as I was. You feel me? I wouldn't be successful. Luckily, a guard came over. And saw while well, saw that I was standing over his bed, but he didn't see what I was doing. You feel me? So, and amidst the luck, like I'm I'm strangling this nigga. You feel me? I'm trying to keep him quiet. Amidst my like amidst his luck, this nigga screams out and he hears him. So like I've got his blood all over my hands. You feel me? All over my my chest, literally. Yeah, right. So like and don't ju- like don't think I'm trying to be cliche or a fucking weirdo when I say this, but I was going cr- I was going crazy. Yeah. Like I, I I smear his blood on my face, on my hands. 
I got it like in my nails. Like, oh, bro, I have it all over me. You feel me? War so, paint. The <laughs> That's tight. Type shit. Like I was going crazy. I was going fucking crazy. So I walk like they they open it and they see that obviously because he screamed they open it they pull me off. So then I go out and I said I told y'all I told y'all I would kill him. I told y'all. And the thing was like they respected that. You feel me? Because like. I told them what I was going to do. Like, it's not like... You're saying I, the cops respect... Or the no, guards the, the, respect the guards respect yeah, yeah. it. Because, like, they put me in a room with someone that made me uncomfortable. And I said that was perfectly fine. You feel me? Well, not necessarily uncomfortable, but they put me in a room with a risk. Right. Because nobody else wanted to be in a room with him, so they put me in a room with him. Don't they normally put the, the gay guys in, like, protective custody or whatever? Uh, they just didn't do well, this here? There is no protective custody. Oh. There is. There's only I the whole... sleep on the floor, like, in the... Oh, yeah, in the... Floor. Yeah, he ended oh. up... He ended up in protective... In yeah, he did. Yeah. He ended up in protective custody. So yeah. so you didn't actually get in trouble for doing this to him? No, because no, 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 no. he finessed I, it. I, I finessed it, but I did get in trouble the first day. So what happened was, after I did that, like I said, the guards really, really, really... I'm not going to say no names, because I'm not a snitchy for me, but, like, the guards really, really, really fucked with me. Uh -huh. So they told me, go to the bathroom... Wash the um, blood off your hands, and bro, I I in swear, face. I swear, yeah, uh, in, in my face. face. <laughs> he said, I, I swear to God when I say this, he told me take it off my hands, and my mom is in the visitation. Go see my mom. I went to visitation with blood on my fingernails. My mom saw the blood in my fingernails and asked me, "What did you do?" She looked at me and asked me, "What did you do?" Because I just had this smug like like empty look on my face. And I was like, I, I was like, well, I was like, this nigga, like, there's some gay shit. So I had to beat, like, I, I cracked his head open type shit. Yeah. And I said it just like that. And my mom starts crying. Like, my mom's crying and just, like, is telling me, like, you don't realize that you, if you fuck up in here, they could, because they were trying to direct file me. They wanted me in prison for, like, five to ten years. For, for that? For the, no, for the for gun the, charges. For the you already on, yeah, for the, yeah. Bro, I had, I had uh, on, on top of an armed burglary, on top of a, a possession, I had, like, hollow tips in my bullets type shit. I had a gun I wasn't supposed to have at that. Right. I was just fucking up, you feel me, with all those charges. So, at anything, if I fucked up in there, they could they could easily direct file me. Right. So, she said that, but um, basically what I did was I finessed it. I... No homo when I say this, but I said the nigga tried to grab my ass. Right. I told that that's what I told to the guards because he he because he was gay obviously, so it would it would work in my favor. So I told him that he tried to grab my ass, so I, I beat his ass. Long story short, so what they did was they cut my visitation short. Literally, as soon as my mom says, "Don't you know that they'll they can take you away?" They rush in, in and grab they you. Rushed, cliche as fuck, but they rushed in, grabbed me, and they took me to what is the hole. Yeah, and the hole is where you're by your fucking self. You have no mat. It's you, just, it's just a concrete just slab. Fuck. And that that shit feels smaller than all the regular cells. It like it makes you go crazy, literally. Bro. Yes, you just sit in there and feel like nothing. the walls get smaller, bro. Nothing, bro. Just nothing. Like in there. How long so, were you in there for? You don't even know. It was the rest of the day, right? Yeah, it was they the rest kept of the me in day. That shit could make you go crazy. Though. I put him in the ER, so they had to keep me in there for like the rest of the day, type shit. But like the, the guards looked out for me afterwards. But not fucking um. But you yeah. say that you, you don't think you're crazy and you think that you can act, you know, like... No, I was you crazy You think when you act... Oh, you were crazy I was back cr then. I was That's this nigga. So yeah. recently, I was fucking crazy. Were you on that drugs or were you, just, were you just <laughs> I, a little kid going I was crazy? on a mixture Very of recent. fucking yeah. testosterone. Yeah. Very a, lot fucking, of a lot of... A lot of... Yeah, I was, I was on drugs. I was... I just... I, I was just fucking wild. Hey, but you were fine when you were on drugs. Fuck yeah. My, my music was... My music was <laughs> It was shit. lit, though. Let's talk about drugs. What kind of drugs were you on? Uh, and were you on drugs in jail when you're choking out gay guys? Look. Low key. Look. Low key. <laughs> choking out gay guys? Um, I mean, me and this nigga like snorted ibuprofens. Like, we snuck ibuprofens under our tongue. Bro, shit. Yo, bro, we was craving drugs, for a fix, bro. Like, bro, shit. bro, you tried being in that shit for a whole fucking month. We was in there for a month, bro. Dealing with for some. Dumbass niggas just trying to fight for just no trying reason. to fight for Crazy no reason. Ass niggas, bro. So, so he's like, yeah. "Fuck this, we're trying to get high." You feel me? So like, yo, like we told him, "Yo, we got headaches type shit." So he got ibuprofens. I got ibuprofens. Snuck them under our tongue. Went back, crushed that shit up. We used to sneak papers from like the fucking um portables type oh, yeah. shit. So like, yeah, we brought them back to the to the fucking. You weren't able to get cell. real drugs in jail though. No, no, no. no. Not this at is all. where we first formatted like. Us, uh, like, us saying that we were gonna do music together. Really? Yeah, yeah. You weren't making music before jail. Um, I was. He I was. was. Okay. A little I was. bit or what? Um, you want me to just tell the story? Yeah. About, let's uh, talk about the music shit too, not just how the it started. brutal assaults. All right. So how it started was, literally, like when I was a kid, like I said, I was bashing fucking crazy. I would just fight way too much. I had problems with my mom. My dad wasn't around. I was just lost. Literally lost, numb. Like, I just wasn't anywhere. You know. And usually, like, growing up, the kids always are like, oh, I want to be a firefighter, or I want to be the president, or I want to... I literally always, always was my answer. You can ask my mother. I never fucking knew. Mm -hmm. Like, I had no clue at all. So, amongst that, like, 
just growing up, like, just knowing I didn't know what the fuck I wanted to do, music started to present itself, because I, like, I would listen, like, bro, like, you can look at me and probably think, oh, this nigga, like, maybe, I don't even know what people think when they look at me anymore, you know, but, like, I think, like, people are probably like, oh, this nigga's typical, he probably listens to, like, Lil Wayne, or, like, and shouts out to Lil Wayne, all these great artists, for me, listens to that typical trap shit, but nah, bro, like, I grew up listening to The Fray, Three Days Grace, Papa Roach. Really? For, yeah, bro, like, Blood, like I was weird. I listened to Blood on the dance floor. Like yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah. I was I was fucking weird. But you bro. weren't into rap. You were just into like, I was, sort of like right, scream out. That's where that's where oh, that's, that's, that's okay. where the versatility no, both, comes. Like everything. Yeah, that's where the versatility comes with me because I would I would go from listening to that to Little Wayne, right. to Tupac, to Biggie, to, to to like different artists. You know, like I came up off like a lot of artists. Like I would go from all of that. Like from rock to 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 fucking rap to literally Japanese fucking instrumentals, like right. different Japanese songs. Like I was completely and utterly mesmerized by music. Where were you, where were you finding out about music? I I don't fucking know. You just stumble upon was, shit on YouTube or whatever. I was just looking shit up on YouTube. I, I at the fucking time I had a Kyosura slide up. Like oh, okay. I I thought I was fresh. You feel me with my little square ass phone, my 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 stickers on my phone type shit. Yeah. I remember I had my Razor, Samsung, this type <laughs> shit. So like, bro, like I just used to download mad yeah. music on there, and eventually I started like trying to play guitar, trying to play piano, because I always told my mom like music ended up being my thing. So she put me in singing classes for like a week. Um, no, no, scratch that, scratch that. Um, before I lived with her, where the music really started is because while she couldn't take care of me, she put me on my aunt's. Shouts okay. out to my aunt. Shouts out to my cousin Maya. But um, yeah, she put me in um, like my aunt put me in fucking uh, what was it? What's that shit called where you sing? It's like chorus. Choir. Chorus. Choir. Choir. Choir or chorus? It's not for you. It's chorus. Chorus is a class. Chorus. Chorus is also no. It was, it was, it was for school. It was choir for school. is in church. No, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I was chorus. It was chorus. <laughs> she had me in chorus and choir. Wow. So she like when she put me in that, I they tried to teach me notes. I, I hated fucking notes. I hated anything I that hated acquired. Notes too, yeah, I, I hated anything I that acquired. I hated notes. Yeah, I hated anything yeah. that acquired like <laughs> feeling like I had to. I, I hated anything that made me feel dumb. Right. Literally. So I wanted to like find my own way with these things, you know? Uh -huh. So I tried to basically, like, learn it without learning notes, and I did. Like, right. So I would, like, I was in choir, ended up getting kicked out because I punched a nigga in his shit. shit like, <laughs> I punched a nigga in his shit while we was literally doing a performance of because course. he kept touching me when we were what singing. The, the, you might be, like, some kind of, like, gay heartthrob or something. You got all these gay dudes. <laughs> no, no, he wasn't, he, wasn't a gay, he wasn't a gay guy. He wasn't a gay oh, guy. Okay. This guy wasn't gay. No. But even gay, even straight dudes are, like, trying to touch up on you. I'm, you feel me? Cause yeah. I'm, I guess you I'm guys just, better not try to pull any funny I guess business. I'm just that pretty. You feel me? Craig, yeah, yeah. Craig, Craig told me he likes me. You know, he, he thinks I'm cute. Craig? He told me he was going to rape me, bro. <laughs> all right, see? Multiple times. He's still on the jail oh, show. Yeah. That. That's, that's his that thing. That's his thing right I now. I played the bro. fifth. Do you joke around about uh, such shit the like fifth. that a lot? You, <laughs> you would tell Craig Zender you're going to rape him? Funny, fuck what like, niggas be talking about. Fuck that thug ass, gangster ass shit. Bro, every nigga crack a gay joke every now and then. You oh, feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. I'll go to my nigga and be like, yo, you sexy, nigga. Like, yo, like you you, <laughs> you my love like young thug, nigga. Yeah. Yo, you sexy this over there, son. You looking sexy. Yo, son. Yo, son, you looking real sexy. I licked them fucking tic tac face tats off your face. That's your men's? Yeah. You got to be really good friends with a guy that's starting to hit with this kind of joke. No, real shit, real shit. No, real shit, though. Real shit, though, like, fuck that, like, bro, I'm not a goon, bro. Like, niggas get the wrong, like, like conception about me. I'm not trying to be a goon. I'm not trying to be hard. I'm not these things. You just I'm have not goon tendencies. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, he's more I'm not the hardest nigga in the boat. Like, if you get, like, niggas like Tyson, nigga, oh, bro, niggas like Tyson will beat my ass. You Mike feel me? Tyson? Yeah, yeah. niggas, niggas like Tyson. Or if you're the average thug on the street, nigga will beat my ass. You feel me? The one thing that is about me is I, I, I stand for what I stand for. So if a nigga comes at me wrong, I'm not going to cower. I'm going right. to try and beat his ass. And if, if I know I can't whoop you, I'm going to stab you. It's bet, and that's a good point too. Is that having a weapon's always nice, but it's better to get beat up standing up for yourself than to just pussy out, and run, pussy away out or run away. Yeah, exactly. Because then you you're gonna lose respect in front of so many people. Exactly. Whereas even it's if, you, even that, if like, you get beat up by the dude, he'll probably have respect for you afterwards you if you like bitch, fight him like a yeah, man. Yeah, fight him like a yeah. 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 I, I ain't never been a bitch. You feel me? Like I'm not the hardest nigga. You feel me? I'm I've never lost a fight. No. I almost lost a fight once when I was in, like, middle school type shit. I lost mm. a round before, like, a nigga, like, got on top of me type shit. But I, like, I dug my fucking finger in his nose and, like, broke his nose and, like, dug my hand in his eye type shit. I was always a grimy motherfucker. Dirty fighter, huh? I was a dirty fuck. You ever take karate or anything Yeah, like that? I did. I yeah. did. He took karate. I took karate. Well, that's where they teach you how to fucking <laughs> break yeah. people's when eyes break, balls bro, out I was everything. a fuck nigga with that karate really? shit, bro. I would go home and try and beat niggas up, bro. Like, I was a fuck nigga. To be bro. honest, yeah, bro. <laughs> that's, how it goes. that's why I always wonder when I see that, like, they're teaching jujitsu and you watch UFC. See, like yeah. when you see little kids fight on World Star and shit, and they're putting yeah. each other in like was, triangle chokes and it shit. It was I'm fucking 
Somebody's UFC. Somebody's gonna die. Yeah. It was UFC that I always loved. Like yeah, I always yeah, loved yeah. UFC, and it always made me want to fight. So now, like, like now, like the type of nigga I am, like. Uh, how do I put it? Like I'm not like I said, I'm not a goon, I'm not a thug, I'm not what these niggas like. Well, why'd you start getting tattoos on your face? Art. Art. How do I put it? It's like telling a story. Every every tattoo on me literally is a story. Yeah. Okay. I don't have a single t- pointless tattoo. <laughs> literally. I put with you. So like literally what I was trying to do is Y'all having fun over there? Yeah. Yeah? We're, we're talking about tattoos. I want, I want to join the fucking party. <laughs> Wi-Fi's funeral just took over this interview. It's Wi-Fi's funeral. Nice to meet you. <laughs> 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 no, all right. Fucking um, tattoos. Yeah. Uh, about my tattoos. Like, every tattoo is a story. Literally, like, that's, that's self-explanatory. Well, know? so why does it say Cleopatra, Cleopatra across your my, chest? It's my mom's name. Oh, okay. It was literally about my strife for my mom. Like, I just was after my mom, literally. Okay. So it was the first tattoo I wanted. My mom's name and my brother was the first ones I got. Okay. It says alone above your eyebrow. Alone. What's that mean? Uh... You thorough, you want thorough or you want brief? Thorough, sure. All right, alone. Alone is the biggest concept for me. Literally, mm-hmm. alone is literally my idolization. Cause my thing is, whether people think they're alone, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're amongst a thousand people, you are still alone. Mm-hmm. Because your lies are not known by these other people. Your sins are not known by these other people. Until you confess your sins until amongst another man or upon your God or even the devil or even what you believe in, nobody will completely know you. So no one will ever know if you're being honest. No one will ever know what you want them to know. No one will ever know what you want them, what you want them to know how you feel, you know? Right. So... So you ever have you ever got all right? It's like it's like when a when a female goes and speaks to her nigga, and she's like, oh, and he asks what's wrong, and she's like, oh, nothing, you know, and then he's just like, all right, well, I tried. You feel me? You don't. That's not the response you want. Right. That made you feel alone because this nigga, you feel like this nigga don't care enough to hear what the fuck you talking about. You feel me? Uh-huh. So then you get this feeling of being alone, even though you're in a relationship at that. Right. So my thing is like, I've sinned so much, I've done so much, I've seen so much, and I've just, I, I know what others don't know about me or about this world at that. And it's it's being alone. So you I, feel alone because you don't have anybody who truly understands everything that you've been through? To some degree. Yeah. It, it's just, it's it's some things are unexplainable, you know? Some uh-huh. things I, I can't sit here and talk about because people would think I'm weird or people would think like, that I'm crazy, you feel me? They but, might already think you're crazy. Yeah, partially, partially. And partially. weird. I'm, I'm used to Threatening it. Threatening to rape your friends, <laughs> that might be considered weird. Brutally murdering a homosexual <laughs> in jail, because some people might think that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know. I want to know more about... The music, though, I want to know, like, when did you actually d- start making music? Like, when did you actually start going hard with it? Music, um, I'll be thorough. Um, all right, so, yeah, like I said, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So one day, um, after I got out of jail, my mom, I told my mom, "Yo, music, music." I, all right, here's our, here's our one. I got locked up for a year. They sent me to a behavioral correctional, which is a, it's a fucking boot camp prison, right, for kids. So they sent me to that shit for like nine months. I will know. Yeah, I was in there for a year. So they sent me to that. I started writing in there because, like, after I got, after, fuck, man, this, this is, shit is confusing. All right, I got arrested with him. I, I'm, I dropped my first song before because I don't know where the fuck I was. I think I went to a studio because of my mom or some shit. Mm-hmm. I wrote this song called New Slash Flock. It was my absolute first song, absolute probably best song as far as storytelling. And then I got locked up. I got locked up. I met him. I started telling, like, and then. He knew that I rapped because I was like Facebook famous or some shit at the point at that yeah. time. Yeah. At that time, like, how are you Facebook famous? Bro, I, I really don't know. I was just all jiggy. he did was take pictures, bro. Yo, I used to wear like Diamond Supply. Literally. Like I was a tumbler. I was a Tumblr nigga. That's what it was. You I had was mad t- Tumblr followers? I not necessarily. I had people not that even would like take photography my pictures. pictures oh, like I'm talking That's about like ass. phone that I, selfies. I, I, <laughs> yeah, because you're light skinned, bro. I think so. You feel me? Like I'm ugly now. Like it's straight, but like type shit. Like I was a pretty. Jit, like I was, I was a pretty little jit. What's a jit exactly? It's I, I a don't young nigga, like a young nigga. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's what so I like, thought, yeah. So, so like, <laughs> fucking um, nah. What was I talking about? Being a pretty jit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we got locked up. I had a song out. He knew who I was because he was fucking with this bitch, and like, no disrespect to him, he was fucking with this bitch <laughs> that that was like obsessed with me type shit. You feel me? Oh, like okay. she was. We're not going to say no names, but you know who I'm talking about. Like, she was obsessed with me, always talking. A lot of times they want to fuck the whole crew, you know? Yeah, yeah. type yeah. shit, Multiple jits. We go through that. No, every- no, like, it wasn't ever, like, a me fucking with her seriously. I just no, knew he just, that He she- just knew the bitch, yeah. yeah. He, like, she wanted to fuck with both of us type shit. But I was, like, I was, like, 
on Facebook, I was a big attraction. You feel me? Like, niggas, like, knew who I was type shit. So he came up to me when we was locked up. He was like, yo, do you know this bitch named da 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 You feel me? And I was like, yeah. He's like, yo, that bitch is obsessed with you. She tries to get me to say these things that you say to her. Like, she tries to make all her niggas say that shit type shit. Because I guess she had a fetish for this, what I did uh, type shit. So... Feel me? Shit. I was just trying to fuck the bitch. So, and she <laughs> on this weird shit. Bro, I ain't even fuck yet. I swear to God, bro. bro so like, so <laughs> I'm gonna fuck that bitch. I'm gonna, you feel me? I'm gonna get down. I have it. I'm gonna get down with it. Get down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that ass. No, fucking um, fucking. Well, how was it like? Yeah, he came up to me. He was like, "Yo, this bitch is obsessed with you." And then from there, like, we was fucking cool, bro. Like. From there, like, because I'm a very, I get attached very easily. Like, I'm not gonna be like, uh, uh, to bitches, not so much, but to my friends, like, if I, if I spark with somebody, like, I get attached, cause like, I wanna build a family. Like I said, I don't, I don't even do business with niggas I can't fuck with. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like, I'll do business once, and if I can't fuck with you, I'll be like, yo, if I see you in the street, don't, don't shake my hand. You feel mm-hmm. me? So like, like, I, as a, I'm a very personal person. Like, I take every, like, you can't mix business with pleasure, but I, 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 I tend to. You feel me? Right. Cause I'm human. Yeah. But um. Fuck. Yeah, so he came up to me. We sparked it off. You feel me? Then he knew that I rapped, so he asked me to rap. And I was, like, rapping. He was like, yo, it's just fire. Like, he fucked with me. Because I was doing, like, I was on my old school shit. Like, I was on some boom bap type shit. Like, I was a boom bap rapper. Yeah, were you really? Rapper. Yeah, bro. Who were you rapping like? I was rap. I sounded, I sounded like Earl. I sounded like, I sounded like Earl mixed with, like, Biggie, mixed with, like, Pog. Like, if you want me to spit some shit to, like, yes. all right. Wow, um, Earl comes out. What this song? Um, Hot 97 exclusive. I got it. Mm-sk- mm-sk- Yo, it's like far as this. <laughs> Boy, 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 God damn. Boy, I got you. Right. New okay. York City. Hot 97 exclusive. Shout out all Hey, wait a minute. Y'all niggas shut the fuck Bring up. Hold on. Hey. What's wrong with you? It's hot. <laughs> right. It was like something I was Cypher, like. Cypher, don't get gas. <laughs> I was like, um. Desert I, Storm. <laughs> all right. Never mind. Y'all want to rap. I'm going to get off the mic. All right. So I was like, I seem depressed. Always being bothered, never less. Keeping me out of prison and putting me to the test. They ask me what is happiness, you write it on a check. Or you feel it on a sweat when your dick is in the breast, huh? And then I got one who was like, I was like, um, rack critter, and nap of a sack, nigga, whose blizzard is raps bigger than men of a pack. Brim to the top of a gap, brisk, gripping the bus and the whack, niggas. Try to reply, nigga, what do you choose? Simply irrelevant, cynical, evident, please. Wrestling, like, uh, wrestling evidence, keys moving when definite soul goes for the president, bleed red for the government, tease. Residue sun in your kettle place, right where your bezel lay. Cold blizzardly ghost entity, gold digger. Call me to your friendly cold swinging gas. Give me your cash, couldn't be stash filling. Dove soldier, the coast rover, the gap. I, I forgot, I said some shit like that. He just snapped. Shout out, Harlem. <laughs> <Shout out. laughs> I used to do shit. I used to get ass do shit like that. No, but was it hard for you to learn to rap like that? Because I feel fuck. like a lot of dudes, like, it's the easiest they, they thing. They learn how to rap technical as when, fuck in the beginning. When you right? learn yeah. how the old heads used to do it, right. you only work from there. That's what right. niggas need to realize. You can't go from point A to, to tap point the table. Sorry, I'm so sorry about that. Okay. You can't go from point A to fucking point Z. That right. shit is stupid. Like you can't learn. You can't like niggas trying to rap like niggas trying to rap like like Keith. Niggas trying to rap like 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 Uzi. Niggas trying to rap like Yachty. Niggas trying to rap like the new age shit. You feel me? Right. You can't start from there if you didn't start from that boom bap shit. Cause literally every rapper does. So you think it's better to learn how Just to rap to, technical from, or old school or whatever, exactly, and then be able you to learn find the your flow. Style? Like I've seen niggas hit like retarded ass flows. Like I'll tell my homeboys. You feel me? Some of my homeboys can't fucking rap. Right. Literally, some of my homeboys cannot fucking rap. True fact. True fact. Yeah, I, I try and tell them all the time. Like, yo, this song is not good. Stop. Yeah. You feel me? But niggas got their own opinions. You feel me? Like, nigga, if you feel like you can strive for that shit and learn it, eventually you can do that. That's hard because everybody wants to rap. Everybody wants to fucking rap. Yeah. yeah. But see, that's that's interesting you say that because I feel like, well, so do you feel like, how do you rap now in comparison to the cannabis uh, style raps that you just spit right there? Diggy Simmons. Diggy Simmons now? No, I'm just playing. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to kill you after this interview. <laughs> and rape you. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, I really don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> like, geez. No, no, fucking, um, as, as I'm now, like, my thing is, I'm versatile, literally. There is no definition to my raps. Like, my thing is like I'll go. I have no genre. Like, as of now, because I don't have the tools that I want, bro. If you give me the tools to make what the fuck I want, what are the tools? Proper all, studio, all the, all proper shit. studio, proper engineering, proper even the people that that will sit there and take their work very seriously. And like, as far as the production, if you give me the tools, I'll be the greatest artist that possibly is. Really? Literally. So you really haven't been in that like professional recording environment I, so far. It's just you and the laptop. I've been, I've been yeah, it's, it's been me and the laptop. But like I, like I've been, I can go to studios whenever the fuck I want. But I want people that have the work ethic that I have. I don't right. want to work. I want to meet famous producers. I want to meet famous engineers, p- people who that, cause that take their shit seriously and have molded the name for themselves. 
themselves that actually take their shit seriously. Right. Because I don't want to be in the studio with someone that's going to sit there and oh, throw some compression and throw some reverb and think it's a fucking track. That's not a fucking at track. All. Not at all. You got to show the track some love. You feel me? Like, you can't go in the studio thinking you're going to make some mediocre shit right. and that, that, that's okay. That's why sometimes the underground, like, rawness of the track, like, makes the, the track makes the genuine. Track. Right. Yeah, exactly. So when when niggas tell me, look, I look, and no and no disrespect to to the the person that said this, you gonna know who you are. But some 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 girl was on the phone with me. Was like, yo, um, you need to work on your quality, cause uh, the song look at me. But I went and looked at her plays. I'm like, yo, your plays are like a thousand plays. You feel me? You're trying to you, like I didn't say this to her, but in my head, you feel me? I gotta remain humble, cause I'm I'm a very humble person. But in my head, I'm like, I'm like, your plays are at a thousand, and my distorted ass song is at a million. Right. But so that's the question, though. Do you feel like when you have a song and, like, the vocals are over and it sounds kind of fucked up and the different production quality or whatever, that a lot of it people makes, on the underground kind of mess around with stuff like yeah. this, is that a personal choice that you made or do you just feel like that's the aesthetic it's, that you're going it's with? A personal, it's a personal thing because my ears, like, my ears, I want it to fit my ears because mm -hmm. I know if it's, bro, if it sounds crazy to me, it's going to sound crazy to everybody else. Because mm -hmm. if, if it sounds fucking lit, because I told him, look, when we dropped our first few hits, when it sounded crazy to us, I knew for a fact to other people that would just hear it, it would sound absolutely fucking insane. And mm -hmm. I was always, always right with that. Do you feel like your music mostly appeals to the like post Raider Clan type Florida scene? Mm -hmm. Or do you feel mm -hmm. like, do you, is that a lot of your fans? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No? no, no, no. Let, let me, no. let me, let me answer that properly. Because when you're talking about like it's having lower production no, quality no. or whatever, I mean that's something production that quality. SGP kind of like he was the dude it'll in do the that, beginning we'll do doing it, that. Yeah, that do was it. his yeah. style, yeah. Here's how I put it, cause niggas probably expecting me to come on this and disrespect SGP and be like a fuck ass boy. Yeah. He's a bitch ass, mark ass, pussy ass nigga. You feel me? But like, he wait wait, let me. But okay, no, here, you, every nigga get their homage, and I know you gonna watch this, cause that's the type of nigga you is. Look, you got my respect. In the end of the day, you a bitch ass nigga, but you still got my respect for what you were. You feel me? I got I got fuck perp tatted on me, because the thing is. On your knuckles? I got fucked no, up tight right on, on my, his wrist. I got right on my wrist, bro. Because wow. here's my thing. Because here's my thing. You have a chance to lead the youth. Right. And I, when I come for a nigga, I come for his neck. You feel me? You had you had a chance to lead the youth. Like like all right, if you're the George Washington of the world, are you you're the first president of this? Are you you breed this new sound and you literally have all these fucking children? Cause I've seen, bro, I've had little girls come to me wanting to kill themselves. You feel me? And I know if uh, there's a possibility if I don't speak to them that they're gonna kill themselves. Space Ghost Purp is the type of nigga where a little girl will come to him trying to kill themselves. You feel me? He'll probably manipulate them and let them do it. You get me? Uh -huh. I'm the type of person where if I'm if I'm gonna lead someone or I'm gonna do this shit and people idolize me, I'm gonna lead them in the right direction. You feel me? I'm not trying to be a fucking prick. Right. You get me? So my thing is, he had all these people behind him. Like I can I can easily say that I very much so su supported Space Ghost Perp when he first came out. Who did not? Because he had a wave going. You feel me? Right. Whatever the fuck he had going on, where he fell out with ASAP and them. Shouts out to ASAP. Shouts out, man. Shouts out to even Qaddafi, bro. Like. That beef ha has nothing to do with any me, me anymore. You feel mm -hmm. me? I, Definitely. I, exactly. So, like, man, he, he had such a pull that I was so proud of him as a person and just proud of what the fuck he was doing because he was breeding a sound for the underground, which had never, ever, ever made a it different out. Sound. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, look, yeah, different yeah. sound. Like, look, you know, respect. what totally. niggas don't understand, bro, is ASAP ended up on MTV. Yeah. ASAP en ended up on the MTV Awards. ASAP <laughs> ended up on this, and Perp could have been right there, mm. breeding the sound for Florida. Right. And we would have finally had someone that brought Florida to the map. Besides Rick Ross, you feel me? But Rick Ross follows a certain pattern. Mm -hmm. Space Ghost was in his own section. Right. He breeded something for the underground. The underground is where niggas like us, you feel me? I'm still an underground rapper. I'm not going to be like, yo, I'm an industry nigga because I, I don't have that much pride to be like, yo, I'm an industry nigga. I'm still an underground rapper. I'm still just wondering how, how I'm going to wake up the next day like the next nigga, you feel me? I'm still wondering what my plan is the next day, you feel me? I'm still doing all of this because I do all this shit myself, you feel me? I still got my niggas on, by my side, but we still plan on all this shit. I'm a human, you get right. me? So my thing is like, nigga, if you, if you got the power and, and you, you misuse it, you you dead to me. Right. You dead to me. If you're the president and you're using your power to, to fuck people over, you're dead to me. So it was a no-brainer for you to take part in that uh, Space Ghost diss song? How, how, how I put it? Because it, it originally didn't even start off as a Space Ghost person diss. It, everybody added their own thing into it. Who was the it. other it people on it? I forget. It, it's, it's, um, it's Lofty, 305, right. Denzel, me, and okay. my, my boy right here, my partner. Yeah, me. I go last. Yeah. I'm the last on the song. It, origi it originally wasn't a diss track. To right. be honest, that's yeah. why my verse came out the way yeah, it did. Yeah, because <laughs> it was originally wasn't a diss track, but my thing was is like Denzel, like 
I, I, I don't want to say guided because I don't like to sound like I don't like to sound like I, I, I'm responsible for something. But how do I put it? He didn't want to diss him. Uh -huh. And I said, this is a chapter of your life because every, even the dots on my face represents chapters. It's, chap it's chapter one and chapter two. So my thing is, there's a, there's a beginning, there's a, the, 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 the peak, and then there's the end. Mm -hmm. you know, the downfall, or to some degree, you can end that top. You get me? Right. So he was going, he's going through a different, he's going through different chapters, and that's what he needs to realize. So when you have this person from your past that is, has been harassing you for a very long time. Because obviously he's, he's, he's a grown-ass man. He can't bully a grown-ass man, you feel me? Right. But Denzel is a person that is so passive to where he'll let people fuck him over as far as his name. So everybody had this, this, this distinct look on Denzel. Like, oh, like, and I, I don't want to say pussy, but everybody had this distinct, like, oh, hey, you know, that nigga not going to say nothing. That's how Perp was. Uh -huh. Perp was like, oh, that nigga not going to say nothing. He not going to do shit. You feel me? And then I was in, I'm in Denzel's squad. You feel me? I'm, in, I'm ULT. I'm still members only. I'm still VR, but... I was in, I'm, I'm in ULT, you feel me? So I can't have my brother, because I call Denzel my brother, I call this nigga my brother, I call all these niggas my brother, you feel me? Bruno's my brother as well. I can't have this nigga in my section having a nigga trying to bitch him out right. and knowing that I'm going to let that shit slide because that's not the nigga I am. So I came in and I left my mark. I left my mark on that. So I told him, I was like, here's what we're going to do if you want us on the track. You're going to come for him. You're going to say something, you're going to address it like you should have been did. Right. Because you're not going to get over on this until you win. Uh -huh. You can't settle for a tie all the time. So you yeah, can't let the little win. Don't you think in time. Denzel's case, he's sitting there looking at it like, I just don't even give a fuck. I'm over this. I'm bigger than he exactly. ever was. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what he said. Exactly bigger than he was. But see, the thing know. is, look, but look, look where it brought us. Yeah. Look, how, look how, much, how much of a buzz Denzel got off of finally shutting, shutting Perp the fuck up. Are you happy with Denzel's verse? You think that he went in hard enough? I think I went the hardest on the song. Uh -huh. I think I went the hardest on the song, but my thing. You guys understand? No, I don't got nothing to say. I like Ski's first. Hey right. man, hey man. Really, I like what? Look, nobody <laughs> like nobody like me because I'm the business man. You feel me? This nigga get he get to chill, he get to smoke his dope, and I gotta be out here doing all this business that shit. Man, fuck y'all niggas. <laughs> no, no real shit though. Like I feel like I went the hardest just because I I came on with such an aggression where it's unignorable. Like mm -hmm. I like to like spark something in your head. Like whoa, like, you feel me? How would you end up in Denzel's squad? How you meet him? <laughs> Is he the main that's, industry that's, dude that's looked out for you? Not period. industry, but that's like shit, established. That's, yeah, that music shit was dude. weird, bro. Like, how? Like, how it, it was real random. Who's that? It was random as random fuck. Random as fuck. How it happened was basically like, all right, I was I was doing, bro. I was going hard, bro. We was going hard in bro. You feel me? We was going hard in bro. We was going hard in Miami. Like, our songs was unignorable. In, right? in, in our song. city type shit. Yeah. yeah right. And we was going hard in our city type shit. And we was getting hurt. You feel me? Niggas can't. After a while, you can't ignore a nigga. You feel me? Yeah. So like. We was going to events, and he kept seeing us. And then we got our, home, our, our brother named Chief, you feel me? Chief Pound, shout out Chief Pound on Twitter, you feel me? But um, he, he, he basically was watching us, dis discovering us, you feel me? He was UOT. So the, we did an event called CD4. Shout out to Creative District. Y'all probably thought I wasn't going to shout y'all out, but I'm a real nigga. I keep out for the city, you feel me? Fucking, um, no, nah, he, he seen us at CD4, and I rocked that shit. Uh -huh. I rocked that shit. I'm talking about, like, and no, nah, like, let me correct myself. We rocked that shit. We rocked that shit. I'm talking about like nigga. Oh yeah, we, we turned that shit the fuck up. We was <laughs> we was the face. We was the face of CD4. Yeah, that year. to be Creative honest, District bro. is is it's a it's a it's like an organized show. You get me in Miami. Right. Like, so if you come to the Miami you'll scene, the underground scene, you'll you'll see them. But, that um, day, that specific day, Kodak was supposed to perform after us. Yeah. And the way we performed, we, and we got it shut up, down. We, we shut it, that shit. That's down. how well we so did. So much the so that Kodak didn't feel like playing after. No, 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 no it wasn't that. Was we not. we oh. turned up so lit because people were outside waiting for us. You feel me? Right. Like. We had fans outside of the gate waiting for in us. In the crowd and, and outside. And niggas started freaking out and fighting and type shit because they didn't get to see us. Right. So, yeah, man. Like, we, we turned up so hard that Kodak had to go another day. But really? we were the face of that of that event. Okay. So, he, Chief noticed us, and he was bumping our shit. He brought it back, played it to Denzel, and they were bumping our shit. They was bumping our shit for a while. They tried to invite us to a music video. I don't remember. I think I, I, think I declined. I, I didn't decline. I, just, I, I was said, all right. The first time it got canceled. Yeah, it then, got canceled. And afterward, I, I think they just decided to like just, just get to the point, you feel me, and was like, fuck it. We're just going to tell this nigga exactly what we want. It was like, yo, come through. We want to talk to you about music and business. So we came through. Denzel got to the point. He was like, yo, I want you to be in UOT. I, I, I looked at Denzel, and I told him, I was like, Here's my thing. I was like, I don't know you. You don't know me. You're approaching me on a business level. I don't do that. Yeah. I have to get to know somebody. Because like, when niggas say gang shit and then niggas say squad shit, 
Like, that's, that shit real. Like, when niggas say gang shit, like, it's really gang shit. Like, if my nigga, if this nigga, if a nigga crosses him the wrong way, you feel me, on the street, like, you can ask him, bro. If a nigga come at him wrong, I'm I'm always right there. Like, I'm always going to walk up on a nigga and, like, be right there looking. Yeah, you feel me? Because, right. like, on gang shit, like, a gang moves as in a gang. So you could call members only a gang. You feel you me? You like, think you might be a little too eager to fight, though? Eager? Have you calmed no, down a little over the years, years, or are you I've, still I've, at I've peak down over eagerness? The, I've, I'm always at a peak. Because of all the shit I've been He's through. He's eager right? for a nigga to fuck up. To fuck that's, up. That's, that's the I thing. I, I wait for niggas to fuck up because it's like, niggas look at it, bro. Like, I'm not a big nigga, you feel me? So I like when niggas feel like they could but get over like, on me. It'd be like the little sly shit that niggas throw at you a days that exactly. you know it'd be sly shit exactly. that he don't let but, pass. But I don't like, let pass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say shit, you feel me? Like, oh, I think you thought you was going to come at me like that, you feel me? Like, type shit. Like, I'll I say some shit, you feel me? Like, you'll start the problem before they get a chance to disrespect to, to you too disrespect much. Disrespect me, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, disrespect and respect is a big thing because I don't disrespect anyone. Right. I respect everyone. I don't little bro anyone unless you literally are my little brother. You feel me? Like, I don't little bro anyone. I don't come for anybody's ego. I let everybody have their own ego. I let everybody enjoy themselves. I let everybody have their fucking fun. Right. When I, t- when I go on stage, I jump off of the stage into the crowd and perform in the I crowd. I haven't seen you play live yet. You get, you get buck? I get fucking buck. <laughs> I, I'm a, bro, Puya and them didn't want me on their tour. Ask Craig why. They really? didn't want me on their tour. Bro. We got our set. Our set got shut down. We shared a set. We, yeah. bro, we what almost. We Lauderdale? almost. Lauderdale? It, yeah, it was for it, it was for Lauderdale. Yeah, yeah. He, you we got kicked off the tour. He grabbed the mic stand. We were pulling people up on stage and shit. They cut the music off. Oh, you mean off. the venue? Not yeah, Puya. the venue. Here's oh, how okay. here's how I do. It. I didn't mean. Sorry, I didn't mean Puya. Right. Basically, yeah. what happened is like I performed with them for the last four cities. Last four cities it did. Florida, yeah. In Florida, so um, within the I did good. I good. You feel me? I followed the rules the first few uh first few cities. But see, my thing is like everybody feels like there's a standard you have to meet. Everybody uh-huh. feels like, oh, you got to follow the rules. I'm right. not that type of guy. Like, I'm not going to come on your tour and not leave my mark. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go to this different city and not leave my mark. Whether whether it's by me doing some crazy shit, whether it's by me speaking the right words, whether it's by me doing something I was supposed to, you know? Right. But I'm not going to go anywhere without leaving my mark. Even after this, I would hope that you would see how intelligent I am and that I'm not the typical fucking SoundCloud. I think or- you're definitely making your mark. <laughs> I think people, like, because yeah. I, I had no idea that you were on some crazy-ass shit. Like, you know, not, not that crazy-ass shit, but I had no idea about the jail time, the fact that you are apparently willing to fight almost everyone besides Mike Tyson on a moment's notice. No, I'll uh, fight Mike Tyson. You can yeah. get that. He can, get, he can get these hands. Mike Tyson, come catch this fade. Uh, yeah, I definitely just didn't know. Like, I appreciate the music, and it's, it's crazy, like, to me how much of a fan base you've gotten so quickly, but I definitely didn't know that you What's had real? so much personality because you never did, like, an on-camera interview. Yeah. But it's crazy, though, because I feel like a lot of people, they need the visual component of the interview component yeah. to really start to fuck with for, a dude. Like, yeah, for me. Are you, you don't have any videos. Yeah, I Is that I a, shy away from cameras. Cause you and this guy. My, mo- my yeah. mom made me insecure, bro. Like, I don't like my face. Like, really? I don't, I don't. I don't think I'm. A, but you have, you're like a lifelong hot boy. You like you're talking about being Facebook yeah, famous for I, being cute. I was because when, when I was a kid, when my mom was around. Right. After she left, like, I had no confidence in myself because my mom was the one who dressed me. My mom was the one who told me that you know I looked nice this morning or that I need to go take a shower. Like, I, I was. I, my mom was my voice. Does music give you confidence? Music has saved my life. Really? I tr- bro, I've tried to kill myself numerous Literally. times. You, know? you tried Same. to kill yourself. Bro, I got hit by... Bro, you, remember, you remember when I got hit in a car? I get, got hit by the car? Bro, like, my... Yeah. Bro, I, I'm always going to talk about my yeah. ex because my ex and music saved my fucking life. My ex stayed with me as long as she needed to while I was insane and saved me. Because my thing was, like, I lived with my ex for, like, a, a couple... Like, almost, almost a year. Almost a year. I think so. And I, think I was literally going insane. Oh, absolutely. Like, she, and she was my safe haven. Like, I would go to her, and, like, in the very beginning, it was perfect. You feel me? Like, she was what I wanted. She was, she was everything for me. And she lied to me about some, some stupid shit. And then from there, like, I got insecure. Every, uh, any nigga that say they don't get insecure is lying. You feel me? Like, mm-hmm. I got insecure. I stopped trusting her. And mm-hmm. afterwards, like, it just breeded a whole different just madness. Just ruined the relationship, it, huh? Not even, it ruined me. Mm. It breeded, it breeded a whole different madness in my head. To where I was like, I thought I wasn't enough, you know. I thought I, I thought I wasn't shit. Like I, th- I was like, oh, you feel me? Like, what does the next nigga have that I don't have? She never cheated on me. She was a great girlfriend, but you feel me? You're always gonna think that. Yeah. Because what, what do you have that the next nigga don't have? I was broke. I wasn't mm-hmm. tall. I was You feel me? I wasn't the strongest nigga. I was. I, you feel me? I, I didn't have much going besides my music. Mm-hmm. And I, at that, she, the way she loved me and the way she showed me love, I just, I literally loved her so much that. I wanted her to leave me alone. Mm-hmm. So I ruined it just because she loved me, you know? Mm-hmm. And 
it, it's it's not. I regret a lot of decisions I'm making, but I don't, I don't, you always I hold on. You're you're holding on to this one girl. It, yeah, she yeah. stands out to you as yeah, the one. Yeah, always uh, anything she needs, anything she needs, she knows who. She, but what's she your is. relationship with her like now? She hates my guts. She hates you. She hates my guts. But do you think that she actually really does care about she, you, or she, she, loves, she really hates she you? She loves me because look, I, I, me and my ex did a blood bond, like. It'd be like real shit. Me and my like, I, we loved each other so much. We did. yeah, you, Wi-Fi look at me crazy, but that's me scary. and my ex did a fucking blood bond because we loved each other that much. Like, that's not something you can take away. Like, I I can, I can, <laughs> I can feel like like, if she's ever sad, I can feel it. Like it's weird. Like I can, I I swear. Like there's times where if she hits me up, I'll already know what she wants to tell me. Right. You get me? I did a blood bond where when like well, like a couple months in, I was dating her. We I just. I love that girl. Like I still do. You feel me? Like, but I'm gonna let her do her. I'm gonna let her have her have her life, do her life. You feel me? Yeah, because what you're gonna be popping uh, off yeah, as a rapper, exactly. not fucking other yeah. girls. Nah, I don't buy it. Yeah. yeah, I just broke up with a good one too. Yeah. But you know, I got I gotta get my freak on. It's a yeah. sad fact so, of life. So I'm tired. I'm actually, bro. I'm tired of fucking girls, bro. Yeah, my I've dick been stopped working like for a too. while, bro. Yeah, I don't know about that. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but okay. This is a question that I gotta Please know: is when your music crazy. start popping off on SoundCloud? When you start to get this following going, and like, when did you start? To feel like okay, I gotta keep going with this because I'm making a fucking impact. I'm starting to build a following as, here. As soon as I, I, as soon as I got, as soon as we dropped the fuck, um, here's how I do it. Cause basically how it was going is, I got locked up. I lost any sort of fame I had. People knew me. People knew me like fuck. But I lost my 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 pull. I lost my pull that I had. Cause everybody starts off with a pull. You feel me? Mm-hmm. My pull was Facebook. Social networking was always a, a forte for me. I always knew how to social network. I always knew how to publicize things. I always knew how to be a fucking idiot enough to where people would see it. You feel me? It's all it's all a marketing method. Just I'm not getting a little ignorant on social getting media. Getting a little ignorant on social media because no one else will do it. Because right. they feel like, oh, you feel me? People can judge me. Why put my information out there? That's the crazy thing is that I hate to interrupt, but like it's it's just when you're real on social media, like like you know when you see Ian Connor and he's posting this naked chick laying there, and it's like yeah. he's just the one dude who it's, will fucking air it out and show exactly. you his real life, and his real life is pretty sick. But when exactly. I fucking tweet something that is like my real fucked up thought. That shit is people, yeah, hundreds people, of retweets, exactly. you know, people because people the, are scared to they don't win. What's here's all here's here's my my prime fucking motto: What is real will prosper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What you feel in the night, what you feel in the morning, what you feel midday, that you don't think other people have the same thoughts. You feel alone in this thought, but other people have the same thoughts and it breeds and when you when you display this thought it breeds a certain amount of comfort Mm -hmm. within people right and people start to feel like all right this person understands me this person is fucking cool so when i when i say some shit like oh hey i want to fucking gut myself right now hey i want to jump off this fucking cliff i saw you and it broke my heart when i say different things like that and these people they want to say these things to that person but they can't say it because it's been so like it's they gone through all these things all right it's you feel me you can't say certain things it's and your and job to speak for to the speak inner for animal it, exactly. that people don't want to exactly. let out in themselves. And that, that is what people get out of rappers in a lot of ways. They want to get in a fight with someone and shoot exactly. that person so they listen to Cameron exactly. talk about doing exactly that. I, yeah. I am the ep- epitome of the misunderstood. Right. I am literally the people that, that, that aren't, are, aren't understood. Right. I, there's no other way to say that. The key to a successful song or a successful meme is to show the thing that every it's to say the thing that everybody knows but that nobody has the balls said to speak. You know, yeah. or nobody has yeah. said or everybody, you know, exactly. hasn't really fully, you know. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. That's really how we linked up. Exactly. What memes? Uh, no, no, no. Just no. just to be real. Just yeah. being real. Just being just honest real. and open with each other and like uh yeah, pretty much just being real. Like when I met him, what was it? We met each other at the Southside Suicide Tour, yeah. and I heard about him before he heard about me before but when we both met each other. You know, I, I knew who he was. Yeah, I knew he and was. And I, I was aware of you also, and yeah. he had showed appreciation for my music. And so we had—I don't know if he had been watching me, but I had been watching him. And we had a mutual artist that we listened to, that you know, his name's uh, Kill Station. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Kills the shit. Yeah. Yeah, Kills awesome. He was actually supposed to be here. He right? was. Yeah. So we linked up, and we just started talking. And pretty much everything he said in his music and the shit I talk about in my music, you know, I told him that uh, clicked, yeah. exactly clicked. his pain resonates with mine and that I understand where he's coming from. And so on tour, there was a little bit of uh, sometimes there was like some hectic shit or some drama. And like me and him, be, uh, because we felt that we were on tour with those people, we were ready for something to happen. Like we were there. 
Yeah. Just the same way he was talking about taking shit really personal yeah. and not being able to, well, for me, I'm not able to like think about business first. I'm not saying not be able, but it's hard for me because I take the shit so personal. I'm so passionate about it. You know what I mean? That's where we linked up. So you're and saying, what, it's hard for you to like play the, the back, like hard for you to be the, the fifth guy playing before other people? I can't. Or? I can't. I can't. I, I don't mind because I'm always I'm like I don't I don't do videos I I haven't done I don't really even have that many fucking photos on on Twitter you know right I hated Instagram as well but I don't mind being the background guy but I don't like not being heard uh -huh. and I don't like taking initiative when I could have I don't like I don't like saying I wish I could have you know mm -hmm. I don't like saying oh fuck I was in that situation what could I have done better I'm gonna do what the fuck I want. When I want, uh -huh. because I'm gonna do what I could have while I could have. But you, does the, you feel like that makes you not a team player, and that means that you're gonna much, have a hard time getting I'm along with much, people on tour? I'm very or much so a team player because you only have to tell me once. Okay. Because once I make that mistake, I won't do it again. Okay. But I couldn't have said I didn't do it. Right. You get yeah. me? Yeah. <laughs> so if I make a mistake once, you can't look at this person and be like, "Oh fuck, well he he fucked up." You know. You didn't tell me not to. Right. Yep. Exactly. Just like when we was on tour and we talked exactly. about the tour. So down. basically, basically, it wasn't out of disrespect. Yeah, it wasn't. We were doing. I need to. I needed to leave my fucking mark. Yeah. Bro, I was going against Puya, Suicide Boys, right. Don Krez, fucking Mikey the Magician, bro. Even even him. Yeah. But you, you feel me, like, bro, like, I had to leave my mark, and sure enough, I was memorable. Right. Yeah. Because I grabbed mic stands, ran into the crowd, and threw it at people. Yeah. I jumped on top of the fucking DJ booth on the side of my arm and hung around and was swinging shit. You feel me? Like, Wait, so did people get mad at you for like causing nobody, shit and everything? Nobody, was, well, nobody it was, was mad at me. It was the people at the venue that shut the music off. And it was when we started pulling people up on stage. They were like, no more people on stage. Yeah. <laughs> and then I personally, like, I kept kind of interrogating this shit because it was yep. outside suicide tour. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I had no mic or nothing and I felt powerless because I didn't want to give those people that work there the power anymore. Exactly. So I was like, Outside suicide, we were, and we were just doing chance and shit. But my bad to interrupt. Oh no, you you <laughs> yeah. good, bro? Yeah, nah. I brought y'all niggas for a reason. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> man, that's. I mean, really, it wasn't like we set out to intentionally get cut off. We was just like, this is our time to shine. Like exactly. we're opening up for them, bro. We are the little niggas. Yeah. At least that's how it felt. Well, like, people aren't thinking about how you guys are feeling in that situation. Exactly. Though, huh? Niggas yeah. are just like, yo, these niggas is wrong. <laughs> because, well, they're exactly. looking at you like, oh, you should, be, you should be thankful to even be here yeah. in the first place. Exactly. So just shut the fuck up and nah, do, yeah. do your 10 nah. minutes and, and go. It, exactly. Yeah. And it, it was like anything that was told to us after we did something wrong didn't happen again. Like, hey, you can't do that. Like, oh, shit, my bad. I didn't know. I wasn't told. Right. So, okay, <laughs> next should be like, oh, y'all can't do that. Okay, bet. Da -da -da -da. But, I mean, the shit was fun. I had In the end of the day? Yeah. If you have a, if you have another interview with Puya or Suicide Boys, if you ask them if I'm the most genuine genuine person they met and am I easy to do business with, they will say yes mm -hmm. because I do follow the standard. Nice. But when you don't go beyond the standard and tell me like, yo, you can't be your personality. If when I went on that tour with them because they asked me to go on that tour, I didn't I don't Same. ask anyone to do anything. Mm -hmm. When they when they asked me to come on that tour with them, I told them all you have to do is be genuine with me. Let me be myself and you be yourself because I'm trying to connect connect with you on a mental level rather than just on some on some oh nigga yeah we done business together yeah you know nigga straight you feel me I'm trying to fuck with you you feel me right. so like when he invited me I told him this this is this is my standard you feel me you gotta be genuine and I'll be genuine and I want to look at you as a brother as you look at me as a brother you feel me I want a nigga to be able to see me on the side of the street getting jumped and jump in that shit. Right. You feel me? I don't want to. I, I would hope that of all my fans as well. I've always thought about that. If I'm getting beat up in public, if you listen to my podcast, you better fucking Bro, get in on me. You it. haven't yeah. rubbed. The, you have not rubbed me the wrong way. And I know. I know. I'm gonna benefit off this. And you. May, I don't know if you benefit off this. You feel yeah. me? It, I'm gonna benefit off this. You feel me? You helped me. This is helping my career. Mm. So if I see anyone jumping you, I would jump in. What about you just straight up murder someone for me? Is that cool? Uh, you don't know them. You don't know what they did to me. I just send you. You shoot nah. them. That's it. No, nah, that's just like being a dumbass. That's too much. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm looking for shooters out there. If anybody's uh, there. I'll stop. Gabe? Well, I'll he's stop. got the bike. You could roll up on the bike, shoot somebody. Yeah. Slide on in the Yeah, yeah but uh, shooters for hire. Hit me up in my DMs if you're a shooter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> what what else do we need to clear up? Because we are deep into this interview. I think it's been a fucking great interview. I had no idea you were going to be this talkative. I'm very happy about it. Uh, no, I'm not a prick here. <laughs> no, you're awesome. Yeah, what what else do we need to know about you, though? Is there anything else we need to know? Besides the fact that people should go to your SoundCloud and listen to all your music? Um, the versatility. I have no genre. Like, mm -hmm. you'll probably see me you'll probably see me drop a fucking song with a country singer. And okay. you would never expect that. Right. Like, I, like I dropped this song called um, Valentine, Vi a Violent Valentine Lullaby, and it was more like a... 
like an indie like heroin high rock mm-hmm. literally yeah because you have like some bangers you have some songs with like crazy production which is like you screaming you have mm-hmm. some songs that are like real soft that are mostly instrumental you go in like a million different directions on soundcloud fuck yeah and you delete shit yeah <laughs> Shit that you don't like, you just end up kind of. If you're a real fan, if I drop a song for ten minutes, you'll have that shit downloaded. Download it. I always leave it downloaded. Okay. Yeah. Always, you'll take that shit, take it to YouTube. Boom. Is that is that cool for you? Like to have oh, yeah. your fans kind of scrapbooking and putting my f- my music is free for a reason. Okay. Un- until it's on an album, and and then I feel like you're disrespecting me by selling my album because I needed money from it. Right. Then you're a prick. But if my music is free, you're allowed to download it because I'm doing this purposely for that bond. I don't do this for the money. Right. I, I, I mean, I do this for the bond and obviously the attention because I need the attention. I need it to, to mold me as a person. And I fucking love music, you feel me? But do I need to get money off of this? Yes, because it feeds me. Right. I, this is literally what I make all my money from. Are you looking at this like rap shit? Are you looking at his real career? Like, no, this is what I'm doing? This is I'm my doing? fucking career. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, bro, I, I don't trap. I don't trap. I don't do none of that dumb shit. And I still I make don't. a lot of fucking money, you feel me? Uh-huh. So, like. Where's the money come from? For features Music. for booking, right? Business. Different shit, shit with my clothing. Like, yeah. oh, for anyone that ordered clothes, it's gonna be to you soon. I just, I got a lot. Oh, I haven't of seen shit the clothing, huh? I, I want to see the clothing. See clothing? I can um, see it being dope. I ain't yeah, gonna show shit, me right now. But, just, oh, yeah, I'll show you but later. Show me there. Yeah, I want some shit. Yeah, that shit's dope. I got you. Yeah, yeah. Fuck. What? Uh, can you spell the Twitter? Can you really tell us like exactly where people should check out your shit online? X X X. Wait, we're not we're not nearing a close, are we? Well, we are pretty deep. Yeah, we're an hour and ten minutes in. Fuck. Yeah. Let's go longer, bro. <laughs> I'm enjoying could, this shit. We could go around like five, ten minutes. Because uh, I got these other kids coming that right, I gotta right, do perfect. after you. But yeah, like what else you want to talk about? Um fuck. I mean anything, bro. <laughs> you ever fuck a girl in a pussy just smelled super bad? Yo, I fucked a bitch. <laughs> looks under the Yo, s- under the I table. fucked a bitch on the side of literally like a, of the bando, like amigo type shit. And I was fucking this bitch, bro. And I smelled her ass, like from like, bro. No, uh, but see, the thing is, no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. No, bro. I was you're fuck- three feet away. I was fucking this bitch, bro. And I dead ass thought I stepped in dog shit, so I stopped, bro. Like, I, bro, I stopped mid stroke. You feel me? We're not on the side of this bend. I'm stroking this bitch. I'm like, I'm like stroking this bitch. And you I wrap stopped. it up. Hmm? Wrap it up. What? Bruh. Okay, yeah. well, let's not talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I'm fucking. He was this offended bitch. that I asked. And I, sm- <laughs> okay. I, sm- and I smell, I smell like, I should smell Holy shit. Foot. So I look, I stop this bitch mid-stroke and I look at my foot and I'm like, yo. Yo, that nigga said he looked at his foot. That shit. You know which bitch I'm talking about. I told you this story. Oh, yeah. yeah don't say no names. Don't say no names. <laughs> but no, yeah, I look at my foot and I don't see no shit. And I'm just like, bro, I'm, I'm like stroking this bitch. So you, like amidst it, I, like, I just rub my hand and I'm like, I'm like, yeah. So I wrap that shit up. Like, I just, like, start stroking this bitch, like, fast and nut and just clear it. Yeah. And get the fuck out of there. I, call I love mom. having sex outdoors. Hmm? I love having sex outdoors. You love having sex outdoors? Yeah, it's the no. best. Hell no. In some alley or something? That's always the funnest. No. Uh, hey, not so in Florida right. with not the mosquitoes Florida? and shit, though. <laughs> no, it's exciting, man. Me and my ex have had sex a lot of places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Type shit. Um, totally understandable. I mean, but isn't it cool how I could just bring up like you ever smell a really gross vagina and I just knew you would have a story on deck? <laughs> that's like everybody can relate to that. Ask me the craziest thing you can ask me and I'll answer it. Besides murder, I can't answer that question. Oh, jeez. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't ask about that then. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. If I get th- ask me the craziest thing I could think of, uh, I don't know. Hey man, big shout out to the groupie lust. You know we got Becky in the building. Be- Becky in the building. You, you did the groupie lust thing, the porn thing, the fat Nick did. Of course, you did it. Yeah. Did you fuck or did you just? Of course I did. You did. did. Of course. So I people did. can go watch you fuck. Of course. I have. Por- I'm gonna have pornos out. You are. So you're not ashamed. You're a rapper who's not I'm ashamed a, to actually have secret, sex on camera. Bro, if my look, if my dick is little, somebody likes my dick enough to suck my dick. You feel me? Is your dick little? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's actually really big. Well, see, my thing is, I got this thing that I call a dagger dick. You can call me young dagger dick. You feel me? Skinny at the end and really big. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> see, my thing. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I'm dying in this yo. bitch. But nah, yo, I got I got a really long dick. You feel me? Like my dick's like a good eight, maybe nine. You feel me? I got a really long dick, but it's like really, really skinny and pointy. So like it hits your G spot like right like you feel me hit, hit a nigga up if you wanna you wanna come you feel me because I can make you come. I get right to the point you feel me young dagger dick. That's young, my dagger dick. Dagger, young dagger dick. Get right to the point stuff bitch. You but you're me? saying that you really will do a porno that's tight because like I've so done you, one. That's really? The thing. But that has commercially available. <laughs> Soon. Re- oh, you this is a browsers. Right There's a lot this, of porn in this Florida. This is a fucking man right here. Bruno is a fucking man. You filmed him fuck. 
He's yeah, a porn star. Of course. That's he's, your man. He is the fucking yeah, future, bro. Wow. Bruno is the fucking Gee, future, bro. Yeah. That's awesome. Shout out to Bruno. That's not Bruno. a gay name. Shout out to Bruno. <laughs> Shout out to Becky the Groupie. Shout out to Kelly. Hey, even he's got a grill. The porno that filmer's got bro, a grill. What the he's fuck? He's seen us with the girls, and he had to get one. We had to be fucking shining for me. <laughs> I think if I hung out with you guys, I'd have to go get bro, one, too. I feel like if you hung out with us, you would enjoy us, brother. You would enjoy us, brother, honestly. But no, like, as far as, as far as, like, Fuck, I mean, I'm enjoying this. I don't even want to cut this off. But like, as far as like, as far as like knowing anything about me, like, just know if you ever going through anything, like even you, you feel me, or anybody, like as a person, bro. Like, I would just hope that people feel like they relate to me enough to where they can speak to me. I feel like I, I hope, like, and eventually I'm gonna get too fucking big to like acknowledge everything. But while I can, bro, I'm gonna hear you. Like, I'm not a, I'm not an egotistical fucking. I'm insecure as shit. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I'm insecure about my skin pigment. I'm insecure about my face. Oh, you got I'm, a I'm, nice light skin color going there. Hey, man, you think I'm sexy? Well, I just think it's a good color. It's not too light. Me, it's not too dark. Calling me oh, sexy. You're sexy. No, 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 no. I don't want to know about I this like dagger you. dick I, either. I like, yeah. <laughs> I like your skin complexion. You kind of sexy. Scary, yeah. too, <laughs> no, but like, I'm, I'm an insecure person. You feel me? We all have emotions that we don't, that we don't display. Mm-hmm. That's why I've, I've, I've brought everything down to a minimum. I don't speak too much anymore. I, I don't try and fight too much anymore. Like as far as I am now, because I feel like. The less I say, is the more people will wonder. Right. So I'm I'm leaving a wonder and I'm leaving teasing to do it, it it's it's a job. You feel me? Let your music do the talking and exactly. also the occasional Instagram thirst trap. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You feel me? I, I post pics on my dick every now and then. Like. Do you seriously? I, yeah. No. Yes, bro, ask these niggas. Stop, ask bro. my fans, bro. When you post, when you when are you gonna stop. post this? Uh, probably next week. Next maybe. week? Yeah. Fuck, it's gonna take that long. Mm, I got a ton loaded up already. Fuck, man. All right. Next um, Monday. Next Monday? Yeah, Alright, that's so, that's yeah. clutch. Alright. So when y'all see this, it'll be probably like a week after. So y'all uh-huh. so y'all better gonna be excited and shit. So you can have a whole shitload of dick pics already posted that they'll be ready for them. We, we wanna make the you wanna make the picture my dick pic? Yeah, Yo, it definitely yeah, me. on YouTube. He's getting me all zooted up. Now I'm gonna go post a dick pic too. I'm getting motivated. Bro, it's man. not that bad because then bitches see it and they're like, Yo, this thing is so confident. I wonder what his dick game's like. Bro, I've gotten so many fucking bitches off like just posting my dick. Really? And I don't even have the longest dick ever. Like I have a big dick, but it's not the longest dick ever, you feel me? She grip on my dick like a selfie stick, you feel me? <laughs> yeah. Who is she? <laughs> yeah. The no. selfie stick is like out here. Like, that ass. She no, grips but, your dick out here. Yeah. No, but type shit like, no, like if you, on a real level, if you do listen to my music and like, I would just hope that people feel like they relate with me enough to where they can talk to me. I support all my fans just as much as they support me because they put food in my mouth, you feel me? Yeah. Without them, I would make no money. Without them, I would, I would not have a career. So you have to be very appreciative of the people around you. Like, I, I love this nigga, I love this nigga, I love this nigga, I love this nigga, I love this nigga. You feel me? If we build a relationship, I would like to call you my brother. It's a very genuine thing to me. I don't, and I'm, this is beyond an interview. This is, this is me actually speaking to you as a person, like. I take that very seriously. I want to relate to people. Right. I want to bond with people because I did not have the bond I wanted with my mom. Right. So okay. I felt I felt very my dad wasn't around either. You notice I can't even really speak about my dad. My dad got locked up. Yeah. I had nobody, bro. After my mom kicked me out, I was depressed. I had bad sleep deprivation. Like bro, I had fucking sleep paralysis like it was horrible. Right. And I had nightmares every day. Like I've I've been through a lot, man. I've seen niggas get murked. I've been shot at. Like I, like I have a bullet graze on my fucking arm, like bro, like. What's that I, thing on your elbow right there too? Elbow. Is that a bullet? No, I no, I slammed the nigga on his shit. Like shouts out to high school, you feel me? Ooh. But no, I slammed the nigga on his shit type shit. Like some people, some people remember this, like if locals and shit. But like um, basically like my boy was fitting type shit. He was trying to jump him. So I, I like I picked out because like the other nigga I knew because he was my dog. So I, I was like, yo, I can't fight you, so I'm gonna try to fight your homeboy. I don't know him. I was like, what's up, nigga? Run up. So like he runs up. I pick him up and I run with him like in my hands, you feel me? And I slam him on his shit. But thing was, my arm was under him when I slammed him. Uh-huh. So it was literally like a boom, what people call a boom, like a tackle type yeah. shit. So like as, as soon as I go down, all of down here comes off to up here and it's like mm. deep as fuck. And I just start beating his shit in, just start beating his shit in and like I just try to choke him out. And then feds pull up so he had the bucket. Right. Yeah, Damn, that's crazy. Well, hey, if anybody's looking for some good uh, SoundCloud raps or to catch a fade... Your man's right here. She's more than ready to I, hand it over. What he's forgetting is that they call me Young Dagger Dick. I fucked too. <laughs> so don't don't forget that. You feel me? If you're trying to get fucked, you feel me? My service is not that bad. Hey I'll go, go for like two bucks a night. That's real. 
No genre, but coolest podcast in the world. <laughs> Available on YouTube, SoundCloud, and iTunes. I feel like everybody who listened to this has probably learned a lot about X. And keep an eye on this guy's Twitter because he's going to be posting a lot of really cool exclusive. Hey, and the No Jumper Twitter as well. We're going to be posting some exclusive dick pics. So, Most uh, people probably don't say this, but Adam, if anybody that comes on this fucking show, Adam is a very cool guy. Adam will not make you feel uncomfortable. This was absolutely my first interview, and he made me feel very comfortable. Great guy. Hey, he's I'm glad be. that we could. Oh, other oh, that's hand. Left hand. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. the fault, nigga. Yeah, hand. you got a good handshake, too, great, man. He's a great guy, bro. He's hey. Make you feel comfortable. I like you, too. You're a cool ass dude. I appreciate Craig it. Craig Zan, I like you. Thank you, man. What's, no, no, no. Fuck uh, these Ski, yeah, ski Mask is some guy. Ski Mask is a fucking fuck, nice can guy. You, too. Can we ask him a couple questions? Because he didn't get any time on there. Yeah, yeah. Ask him a question. What's right. good? Yeah, what you, what you want to talk about? Yeah? What you mean? What you, you want to ask me some questions? What type of what type of bitches you like, though? Look, I don't like the I don't like the look he giving me while he asking me this type of question. I just I'm just mesmer- mesmerized yeah. by you feel me. I be wondering I be wondering what you what you be what you be doing on your free time when we're not here. All right, I think we gotta wrap this it interview is, up. We just raised the time a little bit. Is, 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 is it really? Whoa! Whoa. Whoa. Oh yes! Happy, Happy birthday oh, to oh, you! Oh, Happy oh, birthday oh, to oh, you! Go get! God, hey. I don't know shout how to end this show. Hey. And happy birthday to you. And happy birthday to you. Oh, yeah. Shout out members only. Shout out No Jumper. Shout, shout out, out members only. <laughs> VR, very, very tough. Rich life. Hey, let's show them the handshake before you go. Boom, 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 boom. 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 Boom, boom,